ברוך אתה, אדוני אלוהינו, מלך העולם אשר נותן תורת אמת ובשורת ישועה לעמו ישראל ולכל העמים על ידי בנו ישוע המשיח, אדוננו. Praised are you, Adonai our God, King of the universe, who gives the Torah of truth and the good news of salvation to his people Israel and to all the peoples through his son Yeshua the Messiah, our Lord. Ruach Adonai Yud Hei Vav Hei Alai Ya'an Mashach Yud Hei Vav Hei Oti Levaser Anovim Shlachani Lachavosh Lenishbarei Lev Likro Lashvuim Dror Vela Asurim Pakach Koach Likro Shnat Ratzon Le Yud Hei Vav Hei Vyom Nakam Le Eloheinu Lenachem Kol Avelim לסום לאבלי ציון, לתת להם פאר תחת אפר, שמן ששון תחת אבל, מעטה תהילה תחת רוח כהה, וקורא להם אילי הצדק, מתה יה ווה להתפאר. ספר ישעיהו, פרק 61, פסוקים 1-3 The Spirit of Adonai Elohim is upon me because Adonai has anointed me to announce good news to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom to the captives, to let out into light those bound in the dark, to proclaim the year of the favor of Adonai and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, yes, provide for those in Zion who mourn, giving them garlands instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, a cloak of praise instead of a heavy spirit, so that they will be called oaks of righteousness planted by Adonai, in which he takes pride. The Book of Isaiah, Isaiah, chapter 61, verses 1 through 3, Complete Jewish Bible. Shalom Alechem Uvruchim Hashavim, peace be upon you and welcome back to what I hope to be another enlightening and Holy Spirit filled episode 23 of Finding, Finding Higher, higher ground. ground. Once again, it is your humble servant, the American-born, Israeli-raised, Manic Messianic, who 26 years ago had an encounter in the streets of Jerusalem with the light of the world himself, and now, inspired by Ruach HaKodesh, the Manic Messianic proclaims the good news of salvation and the light of Yeshua the Messiah from somewhere deep in the heart of Seattle, Washington, USA. not affiliated with any Christian organization or denomination. Here is your host, Gadi Hire. Special thank yous and shout outs go to the following. Spotify and Spotify for Podcasts. Everyone at Team Audacity. And also everyone at Epidemic Sound. Thank you all for your hard work. Without the talents of all of you, Finding higher ground would not sound nearly as good as it does. So may Yudhe Vavhe, the God of Israel, bless you 
in the name of his anointed one, Messiah Yeshua. And all the people said, Amen. It's rather odd. I have this Bible app on my phone. It's called YouVersion. For those who are avid Bible readers, you might have heard of this app. This app has uh, a feature called the verse of the day. For the last two days, the verse of the day was pertaining to the gospel. The first verse, the verse for yesterday, was from Mark 16, 15. It reads like this. Then he said to them, As you go throughout the world, proclaim the good news to all creation. That was the verse for yesterday. Now, the verse for today was this. This is Romans 1.16, one of my favorites. For I am not ashamed of the good news, since it is God's powerful means of bringing salvation to everyone who keeps on trusting, to the Jew especially, but equally to the Gentile. Alright, so that's the verse for today, and I'm thinking to myself, gee, I wonder if Adonai is trying, quote unquote, trying to tell me something. Adonai doesn't try anything. He either does or he does not do. Also, from Messiah Yeshua's perspective, I don't think he's a big fan of trying. From his perspective, it's either you do it or you don't do it. And I say this based upon the following. Absolutely perfect example. Here we are, Mark 8, 34, 35. Then Yeshua called the crowd and his Talmudim to him and told them, If anyone wants to come after me, let him say no to himself, take up his execution stake, and keep following me. For whoever wants to save his own life will destroy it, but whoever destroys his life for my sake and for the sake of the, wait for it, good news, will save it. Please note that the Lord Yeshua the Messiah did not say, if anyone wants to come after me, let him try to say no to himself, try to take up his execution stake, and try to keep following me. No, he did not say try, he said do. I know there's a bunch of y'all out there that are thinking about Jedi Master Yoda's famous quote, do or do not, there is no try. Yes, it's kind of like that. I digress. Let's go back to the heart of the issue. What is the good news? Now, I'm not silly. I know that there are people behind the little app in my phone that are, you know, programming it to, you know, display whatever they want it to display. However, with that being said, I do feel that there is a higher power, the higher power, at work here, telling me to get off my butt and sit it down at my chair and record this podcast episode that will be dealing with the question of what is the gospel? What is this gospel that I can't stop talking about? Now, you might have heard me refer to it more as the good news. So when I say good news, the good news, I'm actually referring to the gospel because that's what the Greek word gospel means. It literally means good news. Actually, not only does it mean good news, it really means the best news you could ever possibly hear in your entire life. The Hebrew word for the good news would be habsora in this specific instance. You can definitely translate that also into good tidings, or the best tidings you'll ever receive in your life. But the question is, what is this good news? What's so good about it? 
If there's good news, does that mean that there's bad news too? Y'all remember that classic question from the movies? We've heard it millions of times. Well, I got some bad news and I got some good news. Which one do you want to hear first? I'm rather curious to know just how many of you actually answered me and how do you feel about talking to an inanimate object? Oh, and uh, I'm probably going to wind up giving you the bad news first. As I type the word Habsora in Hebrew into my Google Translate app on my phone, I get the following English nouns. News, tidings, message, annunciation, and, of course, gospel. Now, this is probably a podcast episode that I should have done quite a long time ago um, in the beginning of Finding Higher Ground. One would ask me, why have you not made such a rudimentary podcast about such a fundamental part of the Christian life? The most honest answer that I could give you, my dear listeners, believer and non-believer alike, would be that I had absolutely no idea what I was doing while I recorded the first two episodes of Finding Higher Ground. But here we are, about two and a half years down the road, I've overcome my nervous jitters, and um, I can handle the sound editing and the sound correction and the sound effects, and everything, putting everything all together comes a lot more fluid and a lot more confident, and also there have been uh, great improvements in the software, Thank you, Team Audacity Wave. And um, so, I'm kind of glad that I waited this long to talk about such an important topic. What is this greatest news? Just the idea of talking about such an important issue in my first or second ever podcast with no prior experience to recording anything like that before, I kind of cringe at the thought. So I'm glad I waited. I'm glad I waited the, the time that I did because now I'm, I feel a lot more polished. I feel a lot more equipped to talk about something that is so vital to understanding the Bible, the, the, the spirit the heart of the Bible, if you will, because the gospel is exactly that. The good news of salvation through Yeshua the Messiah is, I would say, the heart of the entire scripture. As a matter of fact, I would say that the good news is the culmination of the written Torah, or even the fruit of the Torah. What do I mean by that? Picture yourself, if you will, that the... Um, the five books of Moses, also known as the Pentateuch in English. In Hebrew, it would be Torah. So the Torah would be the root of the tree. Then you would have Nevi'im, the prophets. That would be the trunk, the trunk of the tree. After Nevi'im, you have Ktuvim, which would be scriptures or writings. That would be the branch of the tree. A good branch produces good fruit. So, in this way we can see the good news, the gospel, come forth as good fruit from the good branch that is the, the writings, that is connected to the trunk that is the prophets, that is connected to the root that is the Torah. I even have a verse from our dear brother Shaul of Tarshish, Paul, in uh, Romans 10 verse 4, it says, For the goal at which the Torah aims is the Messiah who offers righteousness to everyone who trusts. I'm gonna go back to the whole bad news, good news reference. Which one do you want to hear first? I found a little snippet online 
put together by a one Jack Wellman back in August of 2015. As you may or may not know, I prefer to give you something original, but there are available resources out there on the internet, and I feel like I have them at my disposal. Why not share what I found on the internet with you? So thank you very much, Mr. Jack Wellman, for putting this together way back then in August of 2015. What was the good news in the Bible? What is the good news that is mentioned in the Bible? Why is it called the good news? Well, like I've brought up before, there is something called bad news. Here is the bad news. Have you ever had someone tell you, I've got bad news and I've got good news for you? Which do you want to hear first? I usually like to hear the bad news first so that it gets better after that. The way the Bible is written, the bad news is usually presented first and only then comes the good news because the good news is meaningless unless you first learn about the bad news and only then is the good news really good. So what is the bad news? The bad news is that our sins have separated us from a holy God, Isaiah 59.2 and that even our best efforts at good works are seen as filthy rags to God, Isaiah 64, 6. Let's have a look at those two verses, shall we? I'd like to add a little context to this, so let's go to Isaiah 59, 1 and 2 and read those together. Adonai's arm is not too short to save, nor is his ear too dull to hear. Rather, it is your own crimes that separate you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you so that he doesn't hear. Pretty harsh. Okay, let's go to the second one. Uh, Isaiah 64, 6. We'll, we'll probably look into that with a little bit of context as well. And actually, when I look at this um, passage in the complete Jewish Bible, because the complete Jewish study Bible goes by the Jewish canon and not by the Gentile canon, therefore the verses are slightly different. So here, I'm looking at verse 5 instead of 6. It reads as following, All of us are like someone unclean, all our righteous deeds like menstrual rags, we wither all of us like leaves, and our misdeeds blow us away like the wind menstrual rags. That's pretty vivid. That's a little PG-13, wouldn't you say? For those of you who do not know, there is some pretty sordid stuff in the Bible. I have news for you. This collection of books we've come to call the Bible is definitely not for the weak of heart. Now, before I go back to this uh, little snippet that I found here on the internet by Mr. Uh, Jack Wellman, I'd like to put into this my two cents that nobody asks for. Before we fall into the trap of sounding too churchy or starting to speak in Christianese terminologies that are difficult to understand, I'd like to take a crack at explaining something in layman's terms. Adonai Elohim, the creator of the universe, the triunity, the holy set apart triunity of Father, Son, Holy Spirit, created mankind and he had an initial plan for mankind. This plan that Adonai Elohim has for mankind is to give mankind life in its fullest measure. That's Yohanan 10.10. The thief comes only in order to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come so that they may have life, life in its fullest measure. Adonai Elohim still has this plan for mankind. He has this plan for you and for me, for the believer and for the non-believer. Yes, dare I say even for the non-believer because even though you might not believe and put your trust in Messiah Yeshua, Jesus Christ, he still died for you. 
you not putting your trust in what he did for you does not take away the fact that he did that for you. He laid, he willingly laid his life down for you and he willingly picked it up again. So Adonai Elohim, yud Vavhe vav himself, the creator of the universe, still to this day has this plan for you, that you live life in its fullest measure. What life in its fullest measure might look like, of course, could be a whole nother topic of discussion and an entire different podcast altogether. But staying on course, there is an adversary an enemy out there that wants to rob you of living life in its fullest measure. This adversary wants to rob you. He wants to steal away from you this most precious gift that Adonai Elohim wants to give to you. Living life in its fullest measure is having eternal life. Eternal life is this. To know the one true God yud heh vav elohim and the one whom he sent, Messiah Yeshua. Yohanan 17.4 How does this adversary, this enemy, go about stealing away from you this precious gift that yud heh vav wants to give to you? I'll tell you. First of all, this adversary will do everything he can to alter your perception of God's reality, specifically God's reality for you. I think that the example of Adam and Eve in the garden with the fruit is probably the prime example of this specific instance. Adam and Eve at that point, before they uh, had their encounter with the serpent, were completely naive, they were completely oblivious to evil. So when the evil one comes up sneaking up on them in the form of a serpent, they didn't know any better. They didn't know that it was the dark one, the fallen angel. What do they know of fallen angels? Nothing. Nor did they find it strange that a serpent with legs was talking to them. But what this four-legged serpent was doing, he was actually challenging Adonai's authority, challenging Adonai's word, and also altering the perception and reality of Adam and Eve as a result of this challenge. Bereshit 3, 4, Genesis 3, 4. The serpent said to the woman, It is not true that you will surely die, because God knows that on the day you eat from it, the fruit, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Do you see what he did there? He challenged God's authority. He called God out. He called God a liar. Yeshua the Messiah calls him the father of lies, and here we have the devil, the serpent, the fallen angel, calling Adonai a liar. I see that as projection. So see here what the adversary is doing. He's altering Eve's perception of reality, the reality that God has set. Verse 6, When the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it had a pleasing appearance, and that the tree was desirable for making one wise, she took some of its fruit and ate. She also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together to make themselves loincloths. The adversary, this adversary, who is your adversary, altered the perception of their reality that God had set before them, and by doing so, he separated them from Adonai Elohim. This adversary is out to do the same for you by having you live in a world that he has tainted and this world has been distorted into coercing you to miss Adonai's mark. The word in Hebrew for sin is chet, spelt chet, tet, alif, chet. The alif is silent, by the way. The word in Hebrew for to miss, as in missing the mark, 
would be lehachti. It has the same three root letters in it. Lehachti, chet, tet, aleph. Think of it, if you will, as an archer shooting an arrow to a bullseye. Yes, this is a good analogy. An archer shooting an arrow to a bullseye. There is something called a trajectory. That is the path that the arrow takes to reach its bullseye, its target. Okay, Google, what is the definition of the word trajectory? Here's the definition of trajectory. The path followed by a projectile flying or an object moving under the action of given forces. Here is an eternal truth. Adonai Elohim yud Vavhe, vav hey, the creator of the universe, has a trajectory for your life. When an individual deviates from this trajectory, he is missing the mark, therefore sinning. This world that we all live in is under the influence of the God of this world, small g, the God of this world, 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, the God of this world, who is the adversary and the devil. Because of his evil influence, this world will do everything it can to make you, cause you, coerce you to deviate from this trajectory that Adonai has set for you before the foundations of the universe were set. Have you taken a look outside the window lately? Do you see the utter madness that is surrounding us all? You, my dear listener, you are living in a world that has unrealistic expectations from you. You are living in a world that is void of empathy and compassion. Politics don't make any sense. The constant pursuit of money doesn't make any sense. More importantly than that, this world that we live in coerces you to have negative emotions. These are the windows in which the adversary likes to creep through and deviate you away from the trajectory that Adonai Elohim has for you. Now, back to Jack Wellman. The fact is, most people think that they're a good person, but Romans 3, 10, 12 says that we are, quote, all under sin, end quote, and also, quote, none is righteous, no, not one, no one understands, no one seeks for God, all have turned aside, together they have become worthless. No one does good, not even one. End quote. Every single one of us falls short of the glory of God, Romans 3.23, and the only thing we've earned are the wages of sin, and that means death, Romans 6.23. Before we trusted in Messiah, quote, all of us used to live that way, following the passionate desires and inclinations of our sinful nature. By our very nature, we were subject to God's wrath, just like everyone else. Ever so slightly out of context, and yet it can definitely still work. Like I have stated before, this fallen state that we all live in is not necessarily our fault. However, what is our fault are the choices that we make while we're here in this life. Ask yourself, my dear listener, Believer and non-believer alike, ask yourself, what motivates you? What makes you do the things that you do? Is it for personal gain, or do you do them to help others and build others up? That's the bad news now. Isn't it time for some good news after all of that? I think so. The good news in the Old Testament... That's right, you heard me correctly. Old Testament. In the days of ancient Israel, they had runners who brought bad news and good news, and they could usually tell whether the runner had bad news or good news by the way they were running. 2 Samuel 18.27 Ooh, I gotta look at that now. I am using my amazing fake leather soft cover, thumb-indexed complete Jewish study Bible so I can find things faster. Like good manic messianic tradition, I have to backtrack so that I could give proper context to the passage in question. Instead of 2 Samuel 18.27, we are going to start at 18.24. 
David was sitting between the two gates. A watchman went up to the roof of the gate and out onto the wall, raised his eyes, looked, and saw there a man running by himself. The watchman cried out and told the king. The king said, if he's alone, he has good news to tell. Ah, there's that good news. As he ran along and came close, the watchman saw another man running and called to the gatekeeper. There's another man running by himself, the king said. He too must have good news. And this is verse 27. The watchman said, the first one runs like Achimaatz, the son of Tzadok. The king said, he is a good man, he comes with good news. That's very, very cool. I, the Manic Messianic, have learned something with you guys today. Very nice. It is an honor and a privilege. Indeed, good news refreshes the bones. Proverbs 15.30b Adonai Elohim spoke through Isaiah Ishayahu the prophet and said, Go up to the high mountain, O Zion, herald of good news. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good news. Lift it up, fear not. Say to the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Isaiah 49. And here is a passage that I actually wrote down in my side notes while preparing for this podcast. This is Isaiah 52.7. I'm going to go ahead and read it from the complete Jewish Bible because that's just how I roll. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, proclaiming shalom, peace, bringing good news of good things, announcing salvation, and saying to Zion, your God is King. My dear listeners, believer and non-believer alike, the good news is this, that yud vav the creator of the universe, the eternal triunity that created all life and all things that are not man-made, this Adonai Elohim, this yud vav has given you a way out. A way out from all of this madness, a way out from a world that constantly deceives you and coerces you to miss your mark with God. This good news is Messiah Yeshua and having an intimate, personal, spiritual relationship with Him. The good news then is the good news now. God brings salvation and to Him we owe our gratitude and praise. As a taste and a forerunner of the Messiah to come, Isaiah wrote something that Yeshua Jesus would declare almost 800 years later. And here is another favorite passage of mine that I actually wrote down in my side notes while preparing for this episode. This is Isaiah chapter 61 verses 1 through 3. The spirit of Adonai Elohim is upon me because Adonai has anointed me to announce good news to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom to the captives, to let out into light those bound in the dark, to proclaim the year of the favor of Adonai and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, Yes, provide for those in Zion who mourn, giving them garlands instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, a cloak of praise instead of a heavy spirit, so that they will be called oaks of righteousness, planted by Adonai, in which he takes pride. The Good News of Yeshua the Messiah When an angel came to the shepherds in the field one night, the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Luke 2.10 This was the good news prophesied to come by Yeshayahu Isaiah. Yeshua Jesus stood in the synagogue once and fulfilled what is written in Isaiah 61 verses 1 through 3 when he said, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives 
and the opening of the prison to those who are oppressed to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Yes, I know I already read this. Bear with me, please. This is Luke 4, 18, 19 for reference. And then he rolled up the scroll and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all of the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Luke 4, 20-21 It was soon afterward he went on through the cities and villages proclaiming and bringing the good news of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him. Luke 8, 1 With the long-awaited Messiah, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, the scripture was fulfilled, but now what? The good news in the New Testament. Up until Yeshua Jesus arrived and Yohanan HaMatabil, John the Baptist, or Yohanan the Immerser's ministry ended, Yeshua said, the law and the prophets were until John. Since then, the good news of the kingdom of God is preached and everyone forces his way into it. Luke 16, 16. But now with Yeshua's arrival, the good news was to be taken to all the world. Matthew 28, 19, 20 and Acts 1, 8. The gospel, or this good news, for they are one and the same, was spreading. For example, quote, when they believed Philip as he preached good news about the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua the Messiah, they were baptized, both men and women. Acts 8, 12. As I've mentioned before in the beginning of this podcast, the word gospel is the translation of the Greek word evangelion, ev or eu meaning good and angelion meaning message. So the good news is the gospel and the gospel is the good news, habsora, Hebrew word habsora. It is a good message for bad people who can be forgiven by a good God. I'm going to read that sentence again a little louder for the people in the back. It is a good message for bad people who can be forgiven by a good God. In conclusion, the good news or the gospel is not received well if a person doesn't hear the bad news first and that is that they have the wrath of God on them if they disbelieve in Yeshua, Jesus. John 3, 3, B. The bad news makes the good news, the gospel, all the greater to hear. This is the good news, just as Isaiah and Yeshua said. And again, he quotes from Luke 4, 18, 19. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. My dear listeners, believer and non-believer alike, I cannot stress this enough. If you, at this very moment, while you're listening, to this, if you feel like you are poor, then Messiah Yeshua is for you. If you feel like you are broken hearted, if you have been heartbroken here lately, then Messiah Yeshua is for you. He came for you. If you feel like you have been a captive here as of recent, then Messiah Yeshua is for you. If you feel like you have been oppressed and in prison, here lately, then Messiah Yeshua is for you. I'm going to also add this to the mix. This is Adonai talking, but it's from another prophet. It's from the prophet of Jeremiah. It's Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know what plans I have in mind for you, says Adonai. Plans for well-being, not for bad things, so that you could have hope and a future. When you call to me and pray to me, I will listen to you. When you seek me, you will find me, provided you seek for me wholeheartedly, and I will let you find me, says Adonai. 
The good news of salvation through Messiah Yeshua is the gift of the Jewish people to the world from God, from Adonai Elohim Yud Hei Vav Hei. It is the culmination of the story of the relationship between the creator of the universe and his people, the people of Israel. And all those who put their trust in this person who is Yeshua the Messiah, the Messiah of the Jewish people, the King of the Jews, be they Jew or Gentile, will receive God's gift of eternal life. My dear listener, there is a way out of this madness. I challenge you at this moment to read and study the life-transforming words of our Lord Yeshua, the Messiah, who is yud vav in the flesh. I challenge you to study his words. Find it out for yourselves. Let me tell you something. If it can happen to my 90-year-old mother who just recently came to the faith and got fully immersed, then it can happen to anyone. There is no heart that Yeshua cannot reach. If you are listening to this podcast and you happen to be a non-believer and you have been hurt by religion, well, that's just it. You have been hurt by religion and not by God. It is entirely possible that your quarrel is not with yud Hey vav Hey, the creator of the universe, but of whatever religion you got hurt by. I urge you to reconsider. You have no real reason to hate Adonai Elohim when he promises you a hope and a future. That hope and that future is an abundant life, a life in its fullest measure in knowing Yeshua the Messiah. Romans 1.16 For I am not ashamed of the good news, since it is God's powerful means of bringing salvation to everyone who keeps on trusting, to the Jew especially, but equally to the Gentile. For in it, it is revealed how God makes people righteous in his sight, and from beginning to end, It is through trust, as the Tanakh puts it, but the person who is righteous will live his life by trust. My dear listeners, do not allow yourselves to be captives to your sins any longer. Do not let yourselves be captives to missing God's mark. Do not let the adversary steal your opportunity in getting to know your creator, redeemer, and deliverer. You are not going to live forever, and we're losing daylight, guys. All this stuff that you think is so important, it's really not. All this man-made stuff that you think is so important, it's not. There can be nothing more important in life than getting to know the one who created you and the one who can forgive you and restore you. And I speak from experience because this God, this yud Hey vav Hey Adonai Elohim God of mine does it for me every single day. But I invite him to do it. I invite him in to do it. I let him do it. I want him to do it. I want him to reprove me. I want him to take me to the grindstone because he makes me a better person every time he does it. So what's it going to be, my dear listener? Believer and non-believer alike, what's it going to be? Are you going to keep on listening to a world that lies to you and deceives you at every turn? Or are you going to listen to a God that was loving enough he came down from his holy heaven and willingly laid his life down for you and suffered a brutal beating for you carried his cross across Jerusalem for you so that you could have a way out what's it gonna be? 
I can never fully understand the height or depth of his love for me. But I'd rather spend an eternity trying to figure it out than one another day in the madness of the world that is under the control of the Dark One, the God of this world. The 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, God of this world. To the non-believer, I'm telling you, I'm telling you guys, you are missing out if you all knew if you all knew Yeshua the Messiah, like I know Yeshua the Messiah, you'd be on your face, crying your eyes out, because there's no greater love. I'm telling you guys, there is no greater love. I wouldn't be sitting here making this podcast right now if I wasn't absolutely convinced that there is no greater love than the love of Yeshua, Jesus. The love that you get from another human being is wonderful, but it absolutely pales in comparison to being loved from the inside out by God, by yud heh vav -He adonai Elohim, the creator of the universe, through his Holy Spirit, Ruach HaKodesh. And this can only happen. You can only get this by knowing the person who is Yeshua Jesus. It is absolutely vital and imperative that this good news return to the very people it was intended to. It is the Gentile body of Messiah's responsibility to provoke the Jewish people to jealousy, to be jealous of your relationship with the Jewish Messiah. Look at what you have received from Adonai Elohim through the blindness of the Jewish people. Imagine what you could get from Adonai Elohim if the Jews came to the full vision of their Messiah, Yeshua. Just imagine. And my people, the Jews, are not being provoked to jealousy because the message, this Jewish message, has lost its Jewishness. It has lost its Jewishness because the Gentile part of the body of Messiah has been falsely approaching scripture from the angle of them being Gentiles, but you are no longer Gentiles. According to Ephesians 2, you are no longer Gentiles, you are now inward Jews, and you do what Israel does. Messiah Yeshua says that he has another flock of sheep from another pen that he must gather and bring into this pen and there will be one flock, one shepherd. There is no one flock because the Gentile flock remains a Gentile flock. It does not want to be absorbed into Israel. Not really. I say this because it refuses to adopt the everlasting covenants that are the Mu'adim, the appointed times that Adonai gave to Israel. It chooses to celebrate pagan holidays that have Christianity slapped on its surface, like Easter and Christmas. Don't get me wrong, I acknowledge the Messiah's birth and I acknowledge the Messiah's resurrection, but I do not celebrate Easter or Christmas. I am a Jew. I celebrate Passover and I celebrate the birth of my Messiah. Much like Shaul, Paul, the desire of my heart is that all of Israel would be saved. But I have another desire of my heart, and that is that the Gentile part of the body of Messiah realizes its true divine purpose. Not only to proclaim his good news or gospel to this world, but to reawaken his people to the reality that their Messiah is this person we call Jesus. Well, I call him Yeshua. You call him Jesus. Potato, potato. Yeshua is his proper Hebrew name, and Jesus is his Greek variant. Same guy. Yeshua will answer your prayers no matter what language you speak to him in. However, with that being said, I'd like to believe that you might get some extra points if you did address the light of the world in his original name.
Yeshua. In the original Hebrew, it literally means salvation from or of God. The English word Jesus and the Greek word Jesus actually mean nothing, but Yeshua means everything. So now we might have an idea as to why Yeshua equated the good news to himself in Mark 8.35 when he says, He who loses his life for my sake and for the sake of the good news will find it or save it. Because the good news has the same exact power to transform your life and save you from your own sins, just like Yeshua does. One more thing before I sign off. Trust in Adonai with all your heart. Do not rely on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, then he will level your paths. Don't be conceited about your own wisdom, but fear Adonai and turn from evil. This will bring health to your body and give strength to your bones. Mishlei Proverbs verses 5 through 8. I already have another podcast idea forming in my brain. It's probably going to be about the Passover and the ramifications of the Passover in Messianic Judaism and Christianity for that matter. I do hope and pray that this podcast has blessed you and I will leave you now as I always do, with the ironic blessing. Yivarchecha Adonai v'yishmerecha. Ya'er Adonai panav elecha v'yechunecha. Isa Adonai panav elecha v'yasem lecha shalom b'shem ha-Mashiach Yeshua. May Adonai bless you and keep you. May Adonai shine his face upon you and be gracious unto you. May Adonai lift his face upon you and give you his peace in the name of Messiah Yeshua. I will not stay away from you for another six weeks. Until next time, Shalom Alechem, Unishtamea Bekarov, peace be upon you, and you will be hearing from me soon.